Spiky Bits. Hey guys, MBG here today with a look at the newest White Dwarf for August 2013. Uh, they kind of stopped numbering them about 14 months ago or so, I guess uh, I'd say about like last June when they did the uh, the big demons update and everything and um, they've kind of changed things around since then so it's, uh, it's a little bit different. They just kind of go by the month now. So. So it's impossible to tell what number it is, I guess, unless you look on the uh, inside cover there. But anyways, I digress. So this issue has the new Warhammer Lizardmen in it, and it's, uh, it's a pretty good issue. It's got a lot of different uh, Warhammer fantasy stuff in here and some design elements and things like that. And then it goes into, like, a, you know, like a big uh, battle report uh, pitting the Lizardmen versus uh, the Tomb Kings. And then it kind of goes into some parade ground... Uh, things and mixes in a you know a little bit of 40k here and there, which is obviously one of their their better sellers over the fantasy stuff right now. So let's uh, let's take a look at this thing. Uh, it's again it's about 150 pages. Uh, a, a, a full third of it is pretty much advertisements and such for you know upcoming product and things like that. I think the uh, one of the biggest ones was the uh, direct uh, direct Thunderhawk uh, tile for the Realm of Battle. It's like hey. You know, kind of like explaining how how it's such a great display piece and and everything like that, and they're they're very subtle with their advertisements, but then it, then it kind of goes into like uh, a little bit on uh, how how it makes it's a great display for like armies on display uh, armies on parade and everything, you know, so you can enter it. So it's like, hey, our product also is like you know perfect for this, which is you know very uh, it's a very good thing for them, but it's just kind of innocuous like how they. Uh, how they, you know, kind of throw the advertisements in there. So, you know, yeah, you got to give them, you got to give them their due there. Um, okay, so we got the contents here. Uh, this issue again didn't have a Blanchitsu uh, article in it, which uh, I guess it's been about two months now. They haven't had one. It's got all pretty much all the normal stuff. I don't think there was an armchair general in this issue. No, there was, uh, and that was about Bretonians, a big feature on that. And then there was uh, Jeremy V talked did his thing. Jervis Johnson did his thing. And there was a Kit Bash article, Parade Ground, and then it got into the Battle Report and things like that. And we'll kind of co we'll co we'll go over the uh, the Parade Ground and the Army of the Month, which I thought was interesting because one of the new releases for this month is Codex Black Legion on uh, digital download. So I thought it was cool how they put like an Iron Warriors army in for that to try to uh, cross promote it a bit. So anyway, so there's the uh, there's the table of contents, and then you've got you know all your listings for all the new lizardman items and things like that. So the, you know if you haven't seen them yet, they're they're beautiful models. I'm sure they're already live all over the uh, the internet's right now. But I mean the the models are gorgeous. Um, I think it's kind of beguiling, like exactly the size that they are, unless you see them in reference to like you know like a skink or something like that, or like that that's a chariot base, you know. A normal chariot base so it's easy to get confused and think they're a little bit bigger than they are until you see like them next to something else so it's just it's just kind of interesting I like this little uh, lizard bend the skin crease in one of the slam uh, slam mage pieces uh floaty uh floaty throwing things so the lizard men look look pretty cool but that's not kind of what this issue is all about I guess well I guess it is but it's uh it's got some other features in here too so there's the full release uh, listing, which is pretty much kind of everywhere by now, anyways. And then you get into the Army of the Month, which was those Iron Warriors I was talking about. I didn't. I, I like the look and feel of them. It kind of feels like it's you know the the sixth edition chaos now. But there wasn't as much Hazard Stripes chevrons as I guess I would have liked personally, having an Iron Warriors army. But other than that, I think they look great. Uh, the battle report, like I said, pitted the Lizard Men versus the Tomb Kings in a great. Um, a great battle report. It was very easy to follow along with, and that's the one thing I like about fantasy. It's not very convoluted at all. It's like this hits this. It either dies or it wins, and if it wins, it goes through and it hits this, and then it hits this, and then it hits this. Sometimes, so that was very interesting to see. Um, and then I like the, uh, the after action. Oh, here's the uh, armchair general to about the uh, Bretonians. I like the after action report for the um, uh, post battle review rather for the. Um, the battle reports because it basically takes uh, some outsiders and they have a look at the game and they kind of give their point of view. Now this was a very interesting to see because you had the, the writer of Codex Tomb Kings and then the writer of Lizard Men themselves giving their advice. So that's always neat to see how they uh, how they perceive it as well. Um, I haven't seen it yet in the army books or the codexes for 40k like a summary on like how to actually play the army, like how it's intended to be played, but if you buy the digital editions, like um, most recently the Iandin book and then the Tau Farsight book, it gives you some real pointers on how the writer sees 
or the author rather, sees the army being played and some other tips and tidbits and things like that. And it was really interesting to read it. It's like, hmm, that really that that really would work or that is some kind of competitive. So it's it you know, we always sometimes I guess tend to complain about n- no playtesting or the lack of competitiveness and it, and it seems like in those two instances at least that there was some competitive stuff built in there for us to take advantage of, which I which I thought was pretty cool. This battleground uh feature was really neat. It kind of shows uh, some larger versions of what you can do with the Cities of Death kits. And what was really neat about it and what I liked was the fact that, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like an apocalypse table. I mean, you don't really see it as an apocalypse table because it's basically an eternal war mission because you don't really see a whole lot of super heavies there. But the scale of these, these buildings, as you can tell, are so huge that it's really neat to see. And, and they really went out of their way to make some, like, um, very conventional yet over the top like kits like this is uh, like a crazy uh, basilica amount in Minestrato. this is an Ar- arbides like police precinct you know kind of like the judges in uh, those that series of uh, you know uh, comic books and then there's some other stuff like you know basilica and things like that so kind of what they have now but on a bigger larger scale and they really didn't put any, they really didn't waste any of the kits. Like, if they didn't use it with one thing, they used it in the other kit, which I thought was pretty neat. And gratuitous use of, like, wrecked pieces to kind of, and then just some, you know, some blast damage there. Really kind of put it over the top for, like, battle damage and things like that. And here's a good look at the, uh, uh, the Administrata building right there. And then here's the downward look at the uh, Ar- Arbides Precinct, which I thought was pretty neat. This is a really neat feature and definitely... Definitely pretty cool if you're trying to get some terrain for Apocalypse. Uh, the making of monsters I thought was a neat feature because uh, more so with Lizardmen than any other army in the Warhammer world, they really don't have a lot of monsters. So Lizardmen kind of have like all the monsters, like all, you know, <laughs> pardon the internet meme pun, but the you know other other armies have like one or two maybe, but the Lizardmen, I mean, obviously right there in that shot, you've got the two new kids. And then you've got, well, three new kits, basically. And then, of course, you've got the monster that started them all, which was the Stegodon, and they actually make a pretty cool uh, uh, pay homage to the original and then explain the the newer one from three, four years ago or whatever it is. So that was kind of neat, a neat read to see. I actually did a Ravenwing army way, 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 way back in the day in the 90s uh, with all the metal models, used all the metal lizard men, and I, I used, this was my master Ravenwing, and I put... You know, I put some assault cannons and stuff on it, and my um, my my land speeders were the little pterodons, and uh, it was it was kind of neat. And then the the the, um, the lizard men, oh shoot, what were they? The uh, the uh, source riders were basically, um, you know, I took marines and put them on top of there, and they were my bikers. So that was kind of kind of a fun project. I've, I've always had fun with those things. Uh, Prey Ground was a neat little feature because it kind of shows off uh, the Sons of Horus, like a, p- a particular uh, company, because obviously there isn't 20, what is that, 27 chapters, so that's the 27th company inside the uh, the Sons of Horus there, which I thought was pretty cool. And then there's some other conversions, some Sharkadon uh, uh, spin offs, and some super custom stuff here. Um, and then a unique uh, Eldar paint scheme right there. So just kind of kind of a couple cool things in here that I really enjoyed. Uh, paint splatter was really good this month because it kind of, you know, you could use a lot of these techniques that they show in here to paint Tyranids as well, which I thought was cool, or, you know, Tomb Kings in general. So it's always hard to paint flesh, and they give you some really good ideas on different things here. And then the, the another thing I really liked was the weathering effects on the terrain, which is really cool. So uh, this article Jeremy Vitok did was actually really good, and I think everybody should give this a little read because, you know, I think on the Internet sometimes we all get a little out of hand on the forums and, and, and messages and PMs and stuff and the fact of the matter is we're all going to have an opinion you know and, and we're you know some people just are never going to agree with each other so we just you know it's just a, it's just a very interesting read and I, I really liked it I think he I think he really uh, worded that well uh, the white dwarf add-in at the at the back just basically showed you know some normal stuff current with what they were going to show off like the different different armies and things like that and then there was a nice work in progress for, uh, forge world section here some of the stuff we've seen already has been out in the past couple weeks here's that uh, shattered thunderhawk there was a bigger feature in here already but there's a there's a nice nice uh, painted one right there so um and that's pretty much it uh it's uh, 150 pages 
and the, you know about a third of it's the uh, the advertisements and things like that. And the rest of it's uh, articles and uh, no hints to what's coming next month. But the internet definitely has had its say, and uh, we we will see. We'll wait and see on that one. So that's pretty much it for this white dwarf uh, for the uh, August 2013. So I'm MBG Rob Bear. Thanks for watching my video review of the newest white dwarf. Spiky bits.